Hi everyone! Today, I'll walk you through the steps for migrating from an XG to an XGS firewall running high availability using the new Backup Restore Assistant. I'll cover the prerequisites for proper migration, including important caveats regarding migration compatibility, requirements for using the Backup Restore Assistant, and the Secure Storage Master Key and Backup Encryption Password. I'll next cover additional caveats related to HA backups. Then I'll show you how to prepare a backup, restore on the target device, and lastly, finalize your configuration. Let's get started. Check the compatibility for your desired XG to XGS migration. In general, all real-world scenarios are supported without restrictions on the number of ports. Moreover, when restoring a high availability backup, there are no restrictions on the number of port conditions when restoring to a running HA cluster. We've created a compatibility check tool to help you quickly identify if your migration is allowed. Refer to the link in the description for this and other resources. Moving on, the Backup Restore Assistant will only appear if several conditions are met. First, the Assistant is only supported on XGS series firewalls, virtual and cloud appliances. Next, the device you take the backup from must be running SFOS version 19.5 MR4 or later, or version 20 GA or later. And you must restore to an appliance running SFOS version 20 MR2 or later. Note, restoring backups from firewall versions below 19.5 MR4 is allowed on SFOS version 20 MR2 and later. However, the assistant UI will not be present. If this applies to you, refer to the linked Backup and Restore TechVid in the video description. Before taking the backup, make sure you know the Secure Storage Master Key Password, or SSMK. If you haven't previously set this, this is not applicable. If you forgot the SSMK, refer to the linked documentation to reset this. In addition, make sure you know the Backup Encryption Password, which encrypts any generated backup files. We recommend that once you're ready to migrate, update the encryption password, and then proceed to take a new backup. When restoring the backup for high availability configurations, there are additional points to note regarding the dedicated HA link. First, in the backup and target devices, the dedicated HA link port type must be the same. So, make sure this is the case before starting. When restoring, the dedicated HA link port can have a different hardware name in the target device the HA link is automatically detected and mapped to the appropriate port, which may not be the same as on the backup device. So port 3 could map to port A1. And for HA restore backups, you cannot change the dedicated HA link port mapping within the backup restore assistant. If a leg interface is used, the number of member interfaces on the backup and target devices must be equal. If a VLAN interface is used, the VLAN ID on the backup and target devices must match. Moreover, if a VLAN is assigned, you cannot restore a physical interface to a leg interface and vice versa. The backup and target devices must match. For example, a VLAN created on a leg interface must be restored to a leg interface with the same VLAN ID. With that covered, let's start the HA backup process. In this example, I'm migrating from an XGS 107 running SFOS version 20 MR2 and restoring to an XGS 116. The process will be exactly the same if you're migrating from a compatible XG device provided all prerequisites are met. Once again, if you're backing up a firewall version below SFOS version 19.5 MR4, refer to the old backup and restore process. A tech vid showing these steps is linked in the description. Here, I'm running high availability in active passive mode with one dedicated port. And going into network, you can see that port 4 is a physical port configured as the dedicated HA link. To take a backup of the configuration, under system, go to backup and firmware. Click backup now. Once done, download the backup. To restore the backup, log into the dashboard of the target device, in this case the XGS116. Before installing the backup, make sure the device is running SFOS version 20 MR2 or later to utilize the Backup Restore Assistant. Otherwise, you'll need to use the previous method of backing up and restoring. We have a dedicated tech vid that covers these steps and the link is in the description. 
Looking more closely at this appliance, HA was previously configured. However, port 5 is the dedicated HA link in contrast to port 4 in the backup. As noted before, the port type of both devices must match. In this case, they're both physical ports, so we're okay to proceed. Note, if you're restoring an HA backup to a non-HA device, the HA configuration will not be restored. Likewise, if you restore a non-HA backup to an HA device, the HA configuration will be lost. However, the rest of the configuration will be restored. Refer to the link documentation for more information. Now, to restore the backup, go to Backup and Firmware. Under Backup Restore, click Choose File. Locate and open the backup. Enter the backup encryption password and click Upload and Restore. Click OK to proceed. Now, enter the Secure Storage Master Key and click Restore. The Backup Restore Assistant will now appear. On the left are the ports of your backup device, on the right are all available ports on the restore device. Information about the dedicated HA link is shown as well. Note, this list only shows the physical interfaces. Any VLANs will migrate automatically. Pre-existing leg interfaces will be recreated on the target as well. In addition, if you have a breakout capable device, the breakout ports will be shown. In general, ports from the backup device are mapped to an equivalent port by default. If the same port doesn't exist on the target device, the next available port will be used. Now, change the port mapping as required. As mentioned before, the dedicated HA link port mapping cannot be changed using the assistant. The port used in the target device's original HA setup will be used instead. However, you can change the mapping of other ports. For example, port 5 to port 3, and port 3 to port 4. Or, if you no longer need to use a port, select Don't Map. Any unmapped ports will have a pseudo port created on the restore device to retain the configuration. These can be reconfigured or unbound and removed as required. Take care when mapping any WAN interfaces or ports where routing is configured to avoid potential issues. Once you finish mapping, click Restore. And once complete, the device will reboot. With the device up and running again, you can now finalize your configuration. Navigate to Network to view the restored configuration. If your backup configuration contained VLANs, legs, and bridges, they'll now be visible. As mentioned before, unmapped ports are recreated as pseudo ports. These are easy to identify. Each one starts with pseudo instead of port, and the status is not available. We recommend not using or creating configurations based on pseudo ports, since traffic or routing will be impacted if they're used. So, make sure to remove pseudo ports from any related configurations to completely unbind them. In addition, remove any other unused interfaces if needed. The last step is to reboot the device one more time to completely remove the pseudo ports. And with that, your migration is now complete. I hope you found this useful. Check out the documentation for this tech vid in the description. For further assistance, view and post questions on community.sophos.com and go to techvids.sophos.com for more great videos like this one. Thanks for watching.